What is going on YouTube? It's your boy Spanko and in today's video we're going to be doing something a little different than what we typically do here on the channel and that is I'm going to be starting a little how-to series. I'm going to explain in just a second but if you guys do enjoy these videos, I know it's a new kind of video, make sure to like the video and subscribe to the channel for more Yu-Gi-Oh content just like this one, deck profiles, combo videos, all that kind of stuff I upload five days a week for you guys. Now as of the recording of this video, I'm actually going to be heading out to nationals by the end of the week and I was organizing my cards, preparing myself for the event and then I kind of realized a lot of Yu-Gi-Oh players have not got the opportunity to prep for a big event not necessarily a nationals but even a regionals or a YCS so this week I really want to focus on how to prepare yourself for these kind of things in today's video specifically I'm going to be teaching you guys how to put together and how to organize a trade binder now trade binders are really essential in the Yu-Gi-Oh card game because not everything has to be a buy and sell transaction a lot of people like to trade cards I mean it is a trading card game and to do that you do need a trade binder so in today's video I'm going to be showing you guys some tips some tricks and just overall how to put together a trade binder, how to make it look nice, pretty and organized. Let's get into how to make a trade binder. Okay, now this might sound a little obvious, but the first thing you guys are gonna wanna do when you guys are starting off a trade binder is to actually have a binder that you can use to put your cards in for your trades. But this is actually just one of the last steps that you're gonna need. You're just, of course, gonna need one. But then once you're actually gonna get to putting stuff in this, it becomes super, super easy. So funny enough, once we get this binder, once we have our binder, we're gonna put it away. We do not even wanna think about it or look at it right now. The first thing we're gonna do is we're gonna get our pile of cards, however many cards it is, and we're gonna wanna organize it. Now, organization is essentially key in this because once you organize your cards, you guys are gonna see that it makes your life a lot easier as someone who's trading their cards, but it's also gonna make other people's lives easier who are wanting to get cards from you so these two are really important because what it enables is that it makes the transactions a lot smoother it makes them a lot easier and you can build more of a connection with someone who's trading with you now keep in mind that in trading there's a lot of trade etiquette and stuff involved but if someone is seeing something that's really pleasing to the eye something that's really easy for them to look at they'll be much more inclined to deal with you again in the future so i know this is kind of like a business life tip but this is very important because once you have your cards organized everything becomes a lot easier so the first thing you're going to want to do is you're going to want to organize your cards once you have that pile of cards by extra deck by monster by spell and then by of course finally trap card so these are the mechanics that we have in the game right now and by monster i also mean pendulum monsters pendulum monsters will go in this pile as well but you're going to want to subdivide them into these four groups now why this is really important is now it becomes really easy for you to organize your own binder because now at this point what ends up happening is if you're ever looking for a specific card it's already in a pile for you so you're not going to have to go through these random bulk of cards to find a specific card you're looking for because now if you're looking for a specific spell card you know it's going to be in a spell card pile so now this is really nice and all neat and whatever but you're going to put these to the side for now and the reason you're going to put these three to the side is because the extra deck is very very important here what i like to do is i like to separate the extra deck and subdivide it into four different groups which is fusion monsters synchro monsters your Ixies monsters as well as your link monsters the reason i like to subdivide them again is for the same exact reasoning right if you ever need a link monster that you know you have you know it's going to be in the pile of link monsters same thing with synchro same thing with Ixies, same thing with fusion right and if you guys are watching this five years down the line and there's a new extra deck mechanic that is going to be the same thing you're just going to subdivide it as well so you guys can see organization plays a pretty big role in this now of course this is not a how to organize your cards video but it's very important because you guys are going to see when you put this all together in your trade binder it makes for a lot easier and smoother transactions it makes your life so much easier and the easier your life is the faster you can go through trades the more trades you can actually get done so now once you have all your cards there's going to be piles of these right once you have all your cards organized in piles then we can get into our trade binder so now we have our trade binder in front of us we're gonna want to open it up and now of course you guys see there's already cards in here of course this is my trade binder so there's already gonna be cards in here however just imagine it's blank once you have your piles ready Essentially, what I like to do is I just like to go by the era that they came out in. So fusion monsters, of course, came out before synchros, Ixies. So I like to go fusion first. It doesn't really matter exactly how you do this. But essentially, you're going to take that fusion pile that you guys set up and put it together. So now all your fusion monsters are going to be together. So now essentially, if anyone is ever going to be looking for a fusion monster, you know exactly where in your binder to look. Same thing with synchro. Now we're on the synchro section. So we're going to take that pile that you guys organized, put it in your synchro section, and now you guys have a section for synchro monsters. So this is really nice because for someone, let's say if they're buying cards off you or they want cards off you, and let's say they've already looked through your binder and they had like, you know, uh, this uh, Geomath mech in mind and they really wanted this card, but you know, they didn't pull it out because a lot of times when people trade, they don't necessarily pull out cards right away. They might not want it. They might want it depending on where the trade goes, right? So whoever you're trading with, essentially, if they want to come back to this card, you know exactly where to look, right? So now you have your synchro, you have your fusion, which is really nice. And then you have 
your axes. And again, I'm only doing this. The reason I do it this way is because it makes it a lot easier for me to just know where everything is by like, you know, time, you know, fusion came out first, synchro came out second, axes came out first, etc., etc. So that's just kind of how I like to do it for the extra deck. It doesn't really matter. As long as they're all together, that's all that matters. Now you guys might notice something here. I try to keep pages as separate as possible. I do not like to mix the synchros with the axes. And you guys might see a blank spot here and a blank spot here. And I'm going to explain these in just a second because these are also really important when you're organizing your cards. So the reason these are really important is because let's say you're making a trade with someone, right? And you need some filler cards. They want a card from you and you want some cards from them. But you know, there's still a couple bucks down. So you take a couple other cards that you might be like, hey, I'll just put this in my trade binder. And then, you know, I can flip that card that I got from them later, right? Cool. So let's say what happens is, okay, I have an odd number of synchro monsters. I don't want to just start putting my Ixies monsters right after. I like to leave at least one row. And the reason for that is because like I just said, if I end up getting a synchro monster that I want to end up trading later, I have a spot for it right there. Or of course, if I end up trading another synchro monster for a synchro monster, that's going to be a spot for the synchro monster as well. So that is kind of where it comes in. Same thing with here. If I have a spot for an Ixies monster, if I get another one, it's going to go here, et cetera, et cetera. You don't necessarily automatically want to fill this up with your first link monster you see, because later on, you're going to have a lot of empty spots in the back that are going to be filled with random cards which disrupts your entire organization and when your entire organization is disrupted you got to do it again trust me before i filmed this video i just spent like four hours organizing my cards so then of course once we go through our ixies we get to our links and i funny enough don't have a lot of link monsters and we're going to put the link monsters that you guys organized into this section and boom now you have your links organized so at that point you've subdivided your extra deck and now it's all organized for you so if anyone ever wants anything that you have that you know is an extra deck card an extra deck monster Monster, all you got to do is flip to the first few pages of your binder and it's going to be there you don't have to spend time going through like tons of pages trying to find a random card that could randomly be in the middle zone of like the 36th page whatever it is like it becomes really difficult in that sense and it becomes a lot of time wasting which you don't want right and to be honest with you this looks very visually pleasing right like when you go from one to the next it does look very visually pleasing which is really nice because then you're playing a little psychology games all right take it from dr spanko you're playing psychology games people are going to like you more you're going to make more trades all right so here you have your monsters of course like i said you're going to take that monster pile that you guys had and then put it together with monsters now normally typically monsters are probably going to be the most of your binder the majority of my binder as you guys can see here are a bunch of monster cards what i like to do and this is just a tip for anyone if they like to do it this way but what i like to do is i like to take all my high rarity cards and put them up first and this might be another psychology tip but when you have a lot of pretty cards here first i have like alties here you got some old school stuff some mfc first cards very high end cards first then they start taking you a little bit more seriously as someone to trade with because a big problem in the trading community is that people try to scam a lot people try to get the better ends of deals that's just me though you don't have to have high-end cards by no means do i mean if you guys don't have hundred dollar cards then you guys are nobodies that's not what i mean but what i like to do is i like to put my more valuable cards first because i know that these are going to catch people's attention and they're going to want to take me more seriously right so that's just what i do it's not necessarily something that you need to do when you organize but as you guys can see it slowly gets a little bit less and a little bit less and a little bit less impressive as you guys go through. So as I was editing the video, I realized that there was one point that I was absolutely missing that I wanted to talk about, and it has to do with being aesthetically pleasing. And that is if you have cards with the same name, you wanna put them together because this way, it looks just like that they fit, right? So two Breaker here, the three Sukiyomi. Over here, we got the three Thestalos. The same name cards, you want to put them together because it wouldn't make sense for there to be a Sphere Mode here, a Sphere Mode here, and a Sphere Mode here, right? Just wanted to point that out because I think that's really important in keeping things looking visually pleasing. Like, as you guys can see, I have one ofs alone and the two ofs all together, right? I try to do it that way because it makes it look just a lot more visually pleasing. Now, here's something I like to do, and this is a little bit separate. You guys might be wondering, okay, Spanko, but you have these now. Now and they're mixed monsters with spells right okay the only time i ever do this is for two reasons if it's archetype based first of all or in this case if it's language based all of these cards here these nine cards are korean i didn't want to put random korean spell cards with my spell card section i wanted all my korean cards together same thing with this these are artifact scythe but with artifact ignitions as well they just fit in well together now if you guys have a random deck core that you can fit into nine pages or fit into 18 pages you guys can put it together it doesn't necessarily have to be with the spells and traps but this still makes sense right now let's say i have something like sanctums i would probably get rid of this put this somewhere else and put a place out of sanctums here as well because all the artifact cards are going to be together here all my korean cards are going to be together so that's just another tip if you guys have a certain pile of cards that just fit together whether it's a deck 
core or just certain themes then you guys can put them together it doesn't necessarily have to match the monster spell trap thing that i was telling you guys earlier but it is still really cool because it makes stuff very very organized i really like this because it is very visually pleasing to the eye but it's also just very powerful here is actually a perfect example i'm going to show you guys this page right here where i have a fusion monster here but it just fits in with all the destiny hero cards that i have together if i had put this in the front what would happen is essentially then i have one random card here and then we have to push everything back and i don't want to do that because it's a lot of waste of space and empty space so what i did with dragoon for example was it fit with the destiny hero stuff so i have destiny and dragoon just right here so keep that in mind it doesn't necessarily have to go one for one exactly with what i said but as long as it's within its own theme as long as it's within the idea it makes it a lot easier because now let's say someone says i want a destiny and dragoon you know it's going to be with the destiny hero cards or it could be with the front and the extra deck stuff but there's only two places it can be so you don't have to go through all of these extra pages right you know where it can be essentially so moving on then like i said i have the korean stuff over here we are going to go into our spell cards you guys have organized now your spell cards you're going to take that organized pile and you're going to put them into a nice little pile of spell cards look how look how pretty it is to the eye right it doesn't matter what the cards are in here it does not matter what the cards are what happens is it catches a lot of people because now you are organized you look like you know what you're doing and that's really important when it comes to trading right so we here we have a bunch of pages of spells again one spot right here if i need it i have the extra spot then you go into traps you guys see you guys organize your traps. so this is your organization imagine this is your pile this is your pile and now it's organized so what you're going to do is you're going to slide it in there and now you have a ton of trap cards ready to go. So I hope this video helped you guys a little bit. And here, as you guys can see, I have like an extra page in the back. There's just no more cards for me to put in. So I had the extra page. Doesn't matter. The really nice thing about having an extra page sometimes is if you end up picking up cards yourself, you can just put them here. And then you know that these ones are not for sale or for trade. So then, you know, they have an extra spot for you. But essentially, this is not important. I just didn't have any other cards to put in here. But this is just to show you guys, like when you look at the pages, right? Like, look how organized this is. Hey, Spanko, I really need a reinforcement of the army oh okay so it's in my spell card section and all i gotta go through is my spells and be like all right all right it's not here it's not here boom i have a reinforcements of the army right there it's in my spell cards i don't have to go through these like 30 pages of random stuff because i know it's in this section so i hope this video helped you guys as you guys can see trade binders can be very complicated there's a lot of pages there's a lot of cards that you guys can include for me specifically like this entire binder is essentially full right so it's really nice once you have your stuff organized and also in the future if you want to reorganize it makes your life a lot easier in the future as well because all of your cards are already organized by spell monster and trap so if you want to reorganize let's say you get another pile of cards that you want to have organized these are already ready for you so you, all you have to do is if you take them out of the binder to reorganize or re-put stuff in your binder you just take them out in the piles that they originally were put in makes your life so much easier so that is it for today's video i hope you guys did enjoy now that was my tips this is how i personally create my trade binder it looks very appealing to the eye i gave you guys some insight as to why i do what i do specifically it makes it really smooth for you as someone trading cards but it also makes it very smooth for someone who wants to get cards off of you makes transactions very quick and those quick transactions means you can trade even more which is just one of the most fun parts of the game so i hope you guys took something out of today's video on top of that if you guys have any suggestions or have any things that you like to do with your trade binders let me know in the comment section down below that's how essentially we just all learn and do new things together as a community i appreciate every single one of you make sure to like and subscribe if you guys haven't already remember the rest of this week is going to be some how-to videos for the Yu-Gi-Oh trading card game i think it's going to be really cool i think it's going to be really fun so thank you guys all for watching and with that spanko signing out peace